Until today, farming is still believed to be a reserve for the older generation or a retirement plan. This should not be the case. The government and many other stakeholders have been working to have more youth get into agribusiness. On today's show, we tell a story of a retiree who dove into farming by default. A few kilometers from Nakuru, we meet William Mutieno. William is a retired military officer from the Kenyan Navy. He came back home in 2015 and says that he dived into farming by default. After returning back home, I found myself to have a lot of uh, time uh, with nothing important to do. So I wanted to get my hands busy. And by default, I found myself uh, in, into agribusiness. But basically, I do agribusiness and real estate. I normally sell land, types of plots. William's agribusiness venture started as a hobby. His inspiration was from the Bible's creation story as he narrates. Basically, I read the Bible a lot and uh, the story of uh, creation from Genesis chapter 1 and 2. Uh, inspired me to uh, do this kind of uh, mixed farming but now in a small confined space. So it started out as a hobby and it's growing by leaps and falls. At a glance of his homestead, it looks quite disorganized. But don't let the eye fool the mind. William is practicing climate smart agriculture and maximizing the little space available. Started with two rabbits, and then the rest has just kept on, just kept on building and building, trying to get some imaginary numbers, and I hope one day I will hit uh, my target. His rabbit unit is situated in one of the rooms in his house. This is where it all began. I used to go and buy uh, uh, rabbits to come and enjoy the meat. I was buying uh, a piece of rabbit for about a thousand shillings, five hundred. And like I said before, our numbers uh, make sense to me sometimes. So I started thinking, uh, with the kind of uh, rate that uh, rabbits multiply with, I mean, think about it, uh, the, the gestation period is about 28 days. So basically, in about every two other months, every second month, a rabbit is able to give birth or six times, around six times in a year. So I was like, if I can have a thousand uh, pieces of rabbit times 1,500, uh, that would be like uh, a million point five. And I got excited and that's how I, got, I, I started with two rabbits. So this is what, I mean, this, I started from the rabbits and then it, other ideas came to follow later on. Uh, we have them in different stages, like uh, this size, will go for about 500 shillings a piece. Uh, we have different types, different breeds. Like this will be chinchilla, about three kilos, I guess. So like here, I have a beautiful, they call it Mongolian giant type. Since he was not experienced in rabbit farming, he has faced quite a number of challenges. Rabbits are very delicate, especially with their digestive system or, some, or stuff like that. I mean, just a little bland, like uh, maybe you feed them with green uh, fodder that has not been uh, dried. Uh, the next thing you realize that they will, they'll be dying. Or, I mean, it's very easy for them to be sick and die. That's one challenge I've seen with, with, with the rabbits, especially from feeding Anything I miss with the feeding, I mean, most of the time, they'll just die. It will start being unwell in the morning, by evening, it's, it's dead. And they might die in numbers. But uh, so far, so good, you can't compare with chicken. A lot of people don't eat rabbit. He was not one to give up, and through the project, he has enjoyed some good benefits. They fetch good money, because a piece of rabbit will go for about 1,500 shillings and then uh, they don't, they're not heavy feeders. And then the feeds are also not, ex not very expensive because we can supplement with the fodder that we grow. Down here, 
We are also able to harvest the urine from the rabbits, which we use for two functions. Like uh, when you mix one part of urine with one part of water, then you perfectly come up with a pesticide that we will use to control pests uh, on our vegetables. And then when you use it like uh, a portion of, uh, of the urine and uh, two parts of water, then you can use that as foliar fertilizer. You spray to the vegetables, it's good for the leaves and all that. A two-storied rabbit structure is not his final destination. William targets to breed 1,000 rabbits. I still want to expand the rabbits until I get my 1,000 pieces that uh, drove me into the business and then work on the rest. Because remember, I aim to make at least a million shillings from uh, this enterprise in a month. William has also transformed his garage into a poultry and pig breeding area. This was initially a garage. Then uh, we decided to put the livestock inside. So I'm able to, 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 to keep uh, both chicken and the pigs. So the chickens are seeing them in cages, and then uh, pigs are for chini, and they're able to co coexist. Apart from that, the pigs also depend on the chicken waste that we had seen in the solar dryer. Uh, for, for their feeds. We've never had an incident of uh, communicable diseases, but I guess uh, maybe by the grace of God, and also, we want to call it biosecurity, or just the management, uh, hygiene, because we clean the, the sheds twice a day, in the mornings and in the evenings. The quick rate at which chicken and pigs reproduce motivated him to continue rearing these animals. Uh, pigs takes the same amount of time that it takes to rear a chicken. About six, seven months, a uh, pig is good to be, uh, it's ready for slaughter. And then they multiply faster. Uh, one piglet can uh, give birth to between six to about 14 piglets in one go. Then when you do the math, within six months, I mean, it adds up to the numbers. And we feed them twice in a day in the morning and in the evenings. William's agribusiness strategy is quite different from what other farmers do. He markets his animal products through door-to-door -door delivery and his customers call him for orders. He sells a month-old chick at 300 shillings, a full-grown chicken at 1,200 shillings and piglets at 3,500 shillings. When it comes to selling, uh, we do door-to-door -door deliveries and we deal with customers on a case-to-case -case basis uh, through f telephone marketing. So we'll call friends and neighbors and all the people in our contacts who might be interested in uh, either pork or the chicken and we will sell to them in a bit by bit, a kilo, a, a quarter of a kilo and stuff like that. And the good thing is that we will deliver to their destinies. Chicken range from, uh, depending on the size, we'll have a, a month or two months. Uh, I don't know whether to call that a chicken or a chick. Uh, we'll be going for about 300, 400 shillings. And a full, whole grown uh, chi uh, uh, chicken like that, cockerel over there, will go for about 1,200 shillings, yes. So between 300 to 1,200 shillings, yes, depending on the size. We are selling every day or every other day. Yes, two or three chickens here and there, right. He rears the improved Kenyeji chicken, where he sources from a trusted certified chick supplier. Each cycle, he buys a hundred day old Kenyeji chicks, rears them for four months, after which they are ready for market. Basically, I call them uh, high improved uh, Kenyeji. I normally buy uh, like a hundred chicks monthly. But uh, going by the results, because most of our chickens do not lay eggs, meaning they never attain more than four months. Chicken normally uh, lay eggs after four months. So I've been pushing for about eight batches now, and uh, they don't lay eggs. So we sell them before they lay eggs. 
meaning we need to do more, maybe 200 or 300 monthly. With pigs, he started with one saw and currently he has five saws and a boa. This is after selling a good number of piglets and slaughtered a few lots of his pigs for pork production. I started with two, actually it was one. And then I kept on adding the numbers to up to four. Then they started uh, multiplying. Doing this, uh, I will say from 2017 on and off, 2018, it has been on all three years. To occupy a little space, are we able to push? Like the piglets that you see around, they've all been, bo been booked and uh, paid for. So someone came and uh, just uh, booked all of them. We are just now trying to win them and then they'll be good to go and we'll be free to breed our pigs again and, and wait for more for, for them to multiply. I'm trying to employ myself and uh, others and at least create a cash flow maybe over around a million shillings a month. So we've started, the numbers are still uh, low, but we are planning to have like cages all over in a way that uh, if we'll be able to achieve pushing a thousand chicks every single month, in a year we will have hit our target of about 12,000 chicken will be going through uh, our little economy. So with a thousand chicken, Every year, I think we will be somewhere. I mean, 10,000 chickens or 12,000 chickens uh, every, every year, we will be somewhere close. But even the money we are talking about, the 12,000 chickens in a year, you will never see or find that money in, in lump sum. Because it's just like, they call it agribusiness, like running a shop. You will always be having your stock and maintaining the stock. And they will be, you will always be selling. So at the end of the day, it's what you have in your cash till that really counts. So from that you can run your overheads and save a little.